I got another video for you here. We're going to be taking a look at a lift pump problem. I just done the fuel filter and you know I like to put a little cup on the top of it to catch the fuel when I bleed it and then you know when I turn the key on and uh, normally you turn the key on there'll be enough on this 99 series to actually have uh, the lift pump go and the keys on and nothing's happening. So turn the key off. We're going to take a look at the first thing it might be. I'm going to open up the fuse panel here. It's one of the first things I would check before I go underneath. And in this 99 series, this black relay underneath here, this particular guy is the one for the fuel lift pump. I'm going to take him out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick trick to jumper this. I'm going to go here from the bottom left, you know, when I'm sitting here on the fender side, and jumper over to the top right. And if I had a good pump, then I would see the fuel spurting out in that cup, and I don't. So it's not the relay, at least I don't think it is after doing this. So I'm going to put this guy back in, and we're going to have to go underneath. So let's go underneath and do some voltage checks and proceed. Cut out here and pick it back up underneath the truck. Hey guys, we're under the truck now on the driver's side. You can see up here is the undercarriage on the driver's side. We're going to come back. Here's the frame rail. We're coming back to the frame rail past this first cross member for the transmission. And that's where we'll find the lift pump on the inside. Uh, roughly the same position as where you'd find a fuel, an inline fuel filter on a gasoline fueled engine. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to disconnect the lead here. There's a two wire lead and there's just a, a little tab on the back here. Hopefully you can see what the flashlight I've got. I'm just going to lift this up and uh, pull the pigtail connector, the lift pump, out of the connector. Right, just a two pin deal here. Get that out of the side. I'm going to do one other check very quickly here with the key turned off. I got a helper in the cockpit here. I'm going to take my digital voltmeter leads, positive on the left side, negative on the right. And you got to be real careful here. I'll show you here. Hopefully, you can see in the video the tabs inside this connector. You know, they're very small, and so when you do this test, you got to make sure you're actually on the tab, or you'll get a false, you know, you get a false situation, and you'll think you're getting nothing, and it's really just because you're you're not in the right spot. I'm gonna have to put my hand up here to kind of hold it in the right spot. Okay, go ahead and turn the key, and with the key on, we can see we're reading. 11.4 volts, you know, the truck's been sitting for a few days because I had ordered this part from Rock Auto. Uh, there it goes, it popped up a little bit. So part of it's just my, my holding the connection. So we're getting power to the pump here. And so with that passed, I, I feel confident that it's not the relay because we bypassed the relay. And it's not the wiring because we just checked the wiring. So let's go ahead and take the pump off. So I'm gonna pause the video just for a second here to get in a different position and get some wrenches. And then we'll take this guy off. I'll tell you that, you know, we're just going to take it off just like an inline fuel filter. Uh, we're going to get some rags, too, because there's probably going to be some spare fuel in here. And uh, you can disconnect this guy from this end and this guy from this end. And then we'll slide him out of this little black bracket, the, the plastic bracket that's holding him to the frame. So just give me a second and we'll right, come guys, back. I'm in position here. I'm going to use a crescent wrench to hold the actual... Uh, nut on the lift pump end, and then I'm going to come over here with the 16 millimeter open end wrench. I'm going to grab the fuel line side, and then it's just lefty loosey like anything else. I'm going to pull this down. All right, I just wanted to break the tension here. Okay. And then I've got some rags down here. I'm not going to disconnect it yet because I'm going to come over here and do the other side. Uh, I'm going to have to move the camera away to get the other side. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I've already loosened this guy. I'm going to loosen this guy so that I can turn them by hand. So, you know, just, just enough so that you can come in here and move this guy by hand. And then what we'll do is we'll get some more rags in here. We'll unscrew them all the way. We'll catch the, the fuel that happens to be in the lines. And once that drains out, We'll be able to slide the lift pump out and put the new one in. And then again over here, I'm trying to take this, I just want to show you, I'm keeping the rag over the connector. We don't want to get any fuel in that electrical connector that we're going to plug the new pump in. So let me uh, pause it here, I'll loosen the other end, then we'll come back and we'll disconnect it all the way. I got this other end loosened. I'm putting some more rags up here to soak up the fuel. I'm going to go ahead and 
Goose in the sky. And you know, the fuel won't come out right away. But it will as soon as we break the seal. And there's also a possibility that we won't have a lot leaking. You never know. There he goes. All right. Just have to get what's currently in the line out, unfortunately. Got a little thing to trap this down below as well. This is the messiest part of the whole job, just like when you do a fuel filter. So I'm going to let this run out, and then we'll come back. This uh, little bit ran out into this uh, bucket I had down here. Depending on you know how much fuel you got in the tank, you'll have just a little stream or maybe a lot. Uh, the first thing I like to do is, is push this lift pump back so that I can get the line here that goes to the fuel filter out. And then I can work the pump out of this container here. Or excuse me, this bracket. And then just let this last little bit of fuel run into the container here. So if we take a look with the light see the part number on this one it's a G it's a Delco and it's got a GM port number 157-54298 and, and that's the right pump for a 99 six and a half liter diesel so here we see you got a brand new uh, GM part here and there it is 157-54298 and it's a Delco number EP1000 this is a pump that's only used on the 99 with the six and a half uh, the older ones have different numbers that I'll roll on the bottom of the video we uh, get this guy in. He's all sealed up. We open him up. Can again verify that uh, he's got the same number there, 157-54298. He's got a direction that the fuel goes. So we want that arrow pointing to the engine. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to slide him into the, to the bracket here. And then we're going to line, line up on the back. I'm going to start the I'm going to move my bucket of fuel that dripped out of the way. So I can come over here and get a better view. This guy is just getting them lined up. I'm not even gonna see him real good because I got the camera here. There it goes. Alright, so once I get that guy tightened up, that'll stop the rest of that little bit of dripping that we had coming from the back, which is really just like a little siphon effect from the fuel tank itself. Take this guy out of here. I want to make sure that if I got any fuel on this connector, I dry that off. But before I connect them up, I want to make sure that I get the front end of this line done. So just bear with me a second. Just clean up a little bit of the, the drip from these rags. All right, now, so if I can come in here without blocking your view, Pull this guy back enough to get the front back in. Just gotta be patient with it. It's got just another few millimeters to go. Again, it's just a matter of getting the guy lined up so you can thread the nut in. This is a lot easier if you don't have the camera. There we 
go. All right. Now they got this guy finger tight. Just gonna get my rag one more time. Again, I just wanna make sure there's absolutely no feel at all on this connector because I don't want it to interrupt our electrical connection. And I'm gonna make the connection and plug it back in until it clicks. I'm gonna tighten this guy back up and then we're gonna give another shot. So let me uh, pause the video while I tighten it up and we'll see how it does. <clears throat> got that tightened up and now I'm back underneath the hood and I've got the bleeder on top of the fuel filter. I've opened it up a little bit and I'm expecting now, uh, you know, that we'll do this test again that we'll be able to see fuel come through and we'll be able to get the air out of it like we started to do before we found out the lift pump was bad. So let's turn the key on. Okay, we can see the top fill up there and there's our fuel and we're just going to cut it off open it up a little bit more. A little bit more just to get all that air out of there. There we go. So I think we've got all the air out. I see it just filling up with fuel now. And we're going to shut it off. Get a paper towel under here and we will take this guy off. A little bit less mess than if you just leave it all the way open. And that is how you change out a lift pump. I hope this helped you out. Um, you know, the hardest part of this is the fuel running out the bottom when you loosen those connections like you saw. It depends on how much fuel you have in the tank. The less fuel you have in the tank, the less that will run out of that back line. Uh, because it ends up being like a siphon effect. Actually, before I stop this video, I did want to do one thing over again here. I'm just going to come back over and show you guys one more time because I don't think I had it really good in the video before. An alternative to, um, so I'm back here at the fuse box. I'm taking out this relay for the fuel pump. An alternative to turning the key, I'm not going to do it again because I took my cup off and I sealed it up, but would be to jumper from this guy here on the lower left to this guy here in the upper right. And that would bypass, um, you know, so again, it's the, the lower left, jumpered over with a wire to the upper right. And that would uh, be a way not only to test that it's not the relay itself that's a problem, but uh, not having to have somebody else in and turn the key. I hope this helps you out. Thanks a lot for watching.